We're in Santa Rosa, California, and this is the first time I've ever seen this truck that I bought to surprise Finnegan. I saw it on the internet and I'm like, that is what we have to have. This isn't gonna seem as exciting as what's been what did you buy me? built up. What did you buy me? But I will say, it oh. has an engine that we have never messed with before on Roadkill. That is cool. You know what it is? What is this? This is a 74 Mazda REPU. You know what that means? Rotary engine pickup. Can I keep this? It's good, right? I love it. It's almost too nice. You wanna check it out? This thing's awesome. What oh, has bucket seats already? Wait a minute. That's the gas tank. Wait a minute, I've seen this. Oh my god. It's a 455 Olds? With boat headers! Oh my god. <laughs> this is the greatest truck ever! Isn't it? And it has like a Schneider cam in it and like demon carb and the whole deal. Oh my god, this is a poor man's Porsche. No, it's a Maserati. I can't, will it do wheelies? The, the guy we bought it from claims that it runs tens and claims it will do wheelies. We have to find out. <laughs> Isn't this the greatest ever? I'm in love with this. I'm absolutely, I don't want to change anything. This is amazing. I know. The guy claims that he bought this to go drag racing and he took it to the track once and got thrown out because it went tens. There, now it'll break. Is that thing gonna perform well? It really doesn't matter. Cause have you seen that thing? That's good. <laughs> All the noise is back there. <laughs> I feel reasonably safe in this. I love this truck. It's the mini muscle truck, or is it the Maserati? Repo? Repo. <laughs> the lowrider was hilarious in its own way, but this is the finest bit of engineering and style. Now the lowrider was like epic in a disposable kind of way. Yeah. I want to take this home and cuddle with it. Yeah. It's different, different height. We just drove about 40 or 50 miles, 75 to 80 miles an hour and she's leaking oil from a lot of different orifices right now. I might pass the semi. Oh. We're rolling down the highway, this thing's running terrible and running pretty hot, and then we discover this. Pretty much infinitely variable timing adjustment there. Can you hook this to the alternator? Is it too close to the head to attach? Yeah, it's, yeah bad things are gonna happen if it falls off. That's a good fire. fire. Here, watch, it'll get bigger. Ah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Well, I guess tighten it up and... Uh... Oh yeah, it's perfect. It'll <laughs> run tens now. <laughs> when air flows over these things, and I know this from aerodynamicists and racing Bonneville and such, it reconnects like here. It's horrible and it leaves a giant vacuum right here, literally a vacuum where there's no airflow. When we're driving, I stick my hand outside the back and it feels hot right here with just stagnant air, whereas there's airflow right here. This is the worst possible place to put the radiator, which we did not do, as you know, but we're going to fix that with ducting. Three of these right across the roof, which is gonna fit perfectly with ducts right down oh, yes. into the radiator. Yes, it is. It's gonna be yeah. good. This is some Darth Vader looking right here. That, that's gonna be on there for two, three years at least. Really? Before it needs a touch up. I want people to know we invested in this. Oh, this is flawless. Yeah, the tubes aren't even moving. Not even. You know why they're not moving? Because there's, there's no, no air pressure flow. area. Yeah. We just proved the theory. We stopped to get gas and I glance over at these things and I'm like, hey, they have a flapper valve in them. These are one ways, these are vents, not scoops. So now we're pulling the screens off and taping these up because we're that good. This is the most genius thing we've ever done.
Cotton's tens in the eighth mile. Hey, dude, 14 10 at 96. What? Yeah. Let's take the air cleaner off. We're going in the 13s. We're going in the 13s. We wow, need, we, we were tools. not giving this enough credit. This is virtually tens. <laughs> See, 14 10. First up, we just needed to tear the engine apart and find out what we had. We were going to gut this thing pretty badly. Intake manifold gone, all the valve train, the cylinder heads, and probably the camshaft, but I'm not sure just yet. I wonder if it has some sort of a camshaft in it. It has that Schneider cam. The specs are in the glove box. Why are we changing the cam? We don't know what that is. Oh, you said the specs are in the glove box. I didn't read them. Remember how I said that there was cam spec information right here in the glove box? There it is! Were you going to decode it off of the vinyl? Yeah. If he was really serious about horsepower, he would have put that on the truck. Because they work. Mm. We know this. Chrome air cleaners and stickers add horsepower. It's a fact. Right now, we are in the middle of the desert at my buddy Matt and Darren's shop, and you'll remember these guys as the suckers that sold us the Dragoir for $1,000. Are we the suckers? <laughs> and the Rotson, I think, for $500. And we need to put nitrous on the Maserati, so we're gonna hang out with these guys, steal all their parts, and drink their beer in the quest of making this go faster. We jammed to get the nitrous installed, which involves putting a plate underneath the carburetor and doing a little bit of wiring on the solenoids, but you also have to mount the nitrous bottle, which, by the way, likes a little bit of heat to build pressure. See, the reason this goes here is so you can burn your arm yes. and warm the bottle yes. at the same time. Once we had the nitrous installed, we had to get into the ignition, and Finnegan had purchased this rocket science drag racing ignition box that needed a laptop computer to tell it how to have a timing curve. We didn't exactly get it right the first time. Matt and Darren are back, helping us out with the nitrous system after we used up their entire shop last night. Right now they're flowing the nitrous, which means they're squirting the gasoline through an orifice that's the same size as our fuel jet in the nitrous system and setting the flowing fuel pressure at six. You're kidding me! When we were testing the program and stuff earlier, we had the nitrous activation switch unconnected. When it got hooked back up, it got hooked back up wrong, which opened the solenoid. So the whole time that the engine was running when they were testing the fuel pressure, it was pouring gas in the engine. So all the cylinders are full of gas, which is awesome. Look, 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 look. We picked up 10 miles an hour and almost another second off the ET, but we did not get our 10 second pass. We just oiled the entire drag strip. Maybe. Next up, we brought in Lucky to help us out, and his first job was to get the stock fuel tank out from underneath the hood, because we're gonna move the radiator up there, and then he needed to reset us up with a fuel cell that was mounted behind the cab. Let's recap. Old manifold, Edelbrock Performer 455, dual plane deal with a Demon 750 on top of it and one NOS plate system. This gem came out of Freiburger's personal stash. This is an Offenhauser Turbo Thrust 360 Power Port Tunnel Ram. This allows us to put two quick fuel carburetors on top here and two NOS plate systems. And when you do that, you don't divide in half and keep the same power level. We, we double up, so we're guaranteed to go into the tens now or puke the rods all over the drag strip. Either way, we're having fun. Sure.
It runs good. Look at that. <laughs> like that. Nailed it. Sweet. Something's wrong, it fired right up. We're leaving in the morning. We gotta see it with the scoop on. Yeah. The question is, you wanna turn it around so that when we backfire, the flame shoots back like the exhaust? We won't be able to see it though. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Ah! Whoa! <laughs> Don't roll the door down! This is not gonna work. We need to go to a pawn shop and buy some free weights, dude. We need lead. <laughs> the front end is so light that it won't stop or steer. The tires <laughs> are just sliding. When we had a gas tank that was full, this was reasonably safe. <laughs> reasonably? We have, we have a radiator and a toolbox. It's not at all safe. This will be 150. We're better than we were before. Oh, there's plenty of suspension travel. You don't want to put the other 50 on? All right. That's a super sketchy 190 pounds on the nose now, so hopefully that fixes it. Put down, out of here. Stop. We just lost the alternator belt and the water pump belt. We already blow something up? You just threw the alternator belt. Oh, only one of them. Well, you don't need the other one. You still got one. Go ahead. <laughs> maybe we had to put a little bit of that weight back in. Yeah, maybe you should. at 105. And I, I think something that. broke. That's real bad. Here's some news. It's broken. It's shaking itself apart. Half shaft still in one piece on this side. So is this one. I think it's just wheel hopping, dude. An old Tornado transaxle for a front wheel drive car combined with Corvair uprights really wasn't built for but rear engine mini trucking. It's markedly worse than it was. You give it throttle at 15 miles an hour and it shakes. The trans is leaking. So essentially what you're saying is Mike start putting the nitrous jets in while you clean up the trans mess. Is that what, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. All right, game on. Now we get to the fun part. We are about to take liquid in that blue bottle, force it through all these maze of hoses and solenoids and things and put it into that engine. What we're doing is we're simulating the fuel coming out of the regulator for our nitrous system. We're gonna simulate that fuel pressure as if it was going through a nitrous solenoid and out a jet through a plate. It's right at six. I think it'll be fine going down the track. I trust it. I trust it. Yeah. Hey, dude that sold us this, doesn't go tens. No. Never has, probably never will. All right. That is somewhere in the neighborhood of fixed. What we're gonna do this time is roll it off the starting line a little ways before I actually hit the nitrous button. That way it gives that U-joint and all that half shaft and everything a chance to survive. Because once it's rolling, there isn't gonna be as much load on it. All right, Mike opened the nitrous bottle. Now he's gonna purge it. This is it, this is it. Come on, you beautiful piece of crap, let's do this. Oh, that was 
Not good. It blew a head gasket. It's all over. <sighs> Look, it is puking a head gasket, and I didn't even notice it's puking that trans fluid. It's junk. Dude, when you hit the button, it was a rocket. Yeah. What was the white smoke? It blew a head gasket. Notice the coolant on the ground. Making horsepower. And there's a hole in the transmission pan. What? All right. <laughs> My job here is done. Because when it ran, it ran really good. Yeah, it started to give up and I let off the button and I looked at the rearview mirror and it was just smoke show. Dude, Steam. when you hit the button. It boogied. Oh, it was like, that's the quickest that car has ever gone. Yeah, for sure. And then all of a sudden I heard it lay over and I saw white smoke and then I saw you pull over and I went, ooh. Yeah. That's ungood. And now we'll be cleaning the track here at Tucson Dragway. Yeah, 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 yeah. This feels familiar. So it's really another roadkill project vehicle that never fails to fail. But you know what? We love it anyway, especially Finnegan. He is so bonded to this truck. We're dying to make it great. I mean, think of all the good times that we've had with it. We road tripped the thing across the Golden Gate Bridge. We've auto crossed it. We've had it on the big track. We've drag raced the thing and run 1120 on nitrous. And we even took it to the Dirtfish Rally School where it didn't do that bad, at least to the point where we stalled it in a giant puddle but we still love it and we still want it to run tens we are on the way home just scheming all the ways we can make that happen a turbo ls engine whatever and then the truck got stolen legit we were in a hotel in blythe california and it disappeared off of our trailer so do us a favor if you have seen this thing if you know who's got it email us it's the guys at roadkill.com because if the guy who stole it can get it to run tens we need to know about it